What's up, people? It's your man, Irvin Love, reporting live and direct from the Irvin Mobile. Would have had my crown on, but I'm all here. God damn. Yeah, these freaking potholes ain't no joke, boy. Make you want to go to the hospital and check and see if your freaking stomach's messed up. But anyway, it's your man, Irvin Love, reporting live and direct from the Irvin Mobile. Man, look. I'm going to say this one real quick. First and foremost, I'm going to give a man shout out to Luke Walton. And I'm going to give another shout out to Matthew Johnson and them. Based on the fact, I had said this a while ago. The Lakers, I, I told y'all guys, I never liked the second unit bull crap. I didn't like that rotation because it takes away the opportunity from other players getting more minutes and actually gelling, especially when, like, if you know, like, if a player's off in the flunk, in the funk, you know, they don't have enough time to actually get out of that funk because of the way Luke Walton rotation was with that first unit, second unit bull crap. But now, since we actually got rid of Jordan Clarkson, Larry Nance, even though we picked up um, IT, but you know, you ain't gonna see Channing Fryer on the on court a lot, okay? So based on the fact that, you know, and we just we just uh, uh, released uh, Corey Brewer, and I think the OKC Thunder picked him up. So shout out to Corey Brewer. He get a chance to hopefully get back in the playoffs. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't, I think they got him, I'm not too sure. But you know, that's why I see one day about the front office, man, I know I'd be beating up a Magic him a lot, but I gotta get them respect where respect is due. They do look out for the players, man. And notice everybody they gave, they either let go or they traded, they gave them opportunity to get signed by either a contender or go to a, a team where they have a chance to develop the way they want to be developed. So they've been looking out for these players. You know, Matt Johnson is a people person. Now I got to respect that. It's my man. I know I beat him up a lot because I'm still kind of wishy-washy on, on his ideas. But, you know, because I'm not going to be so quick to say, you know, be biased and say, oh, yeah, just believe in magic. I don't do that. You know, I stopped doing that a long time ago. I don't just trust. I don't trust the system. You know what I mean? I got to see it with my own, my own eyes, you know, before I can speak, before I even acknowledge of, like, giving the person um, that much um Salute, but anyway, I respect. I said I respect what they do so far. Now, the thing is, I've been saying over and over again that I did not, never like the really second unit, uh, second unit, first unit bull crap because for some odd reason the second unit was always better than the first unit. Now, Magic has put it to a over. Let me just say the front off because Polinka has a hand in the two. They have put it to a point where Lou won't have no choice but to have a smaller rotation coming in, and because of that, based on the fact they got a small rotation, you starting to really get to see the Lakers play to their full potential. They're not at the top of the ceiling yet, guys, but they're where right now, they, they're playing at a high level. And I've been telling people, I even told um, the um, Lake Show, I do not believe the Lakers would have won 35 games. I believe they could have won 40-plus games. This year, I'm saying it, I'm going to continue saying it because I said over and over again, they had a lot to do with Lou Walton's rotation, his time management, also with the free throws. And I'm not even going to talk about turnovers because the, the way they play at a high pace, you're going to get a lot of turnovers because they constantly run it. But the turnovers are not really killing because they're getting back on defense and playing pretty good D. You seen it um, last night. I mean, they were freaking um, running number. They played the Miami, the Miami Heat. Miami Heat right now at that point in time were ranked number seven in defense. You know what? Um, Whiteside and that dude. I don't know that dude. Now. I don't know what his name is, but that dude was just dunking everywhere. He got a nice upside. I like his game, man. You know that they just straight up. I think like about six ten. But both of them guys was been killing. But and they kind of like. Shut them. They didn't really shut them down. Is that the Miami Heat went because they got so far behind? Miami had no choice but the attack from the perimeter. You know what I'm saying? So, in retrospect of that, they played freaking good. I mean, they were running them. They were freaking running them. It. This is his best game as a Laker. Man, shout out to him. And I said before in, in Twitter that Zublock actually compliment um, It when they're on the floor together. The reason why I said that because Zublock to me. Is a better defender who moves his feet much better than Brooke Lopez. Brooke Lopez, he don't really play under the rim a lot. No, don't get me wrong, Brooke Lopez, you know, he'll get a block here and there. But when it comes to like physical presence, um, I think Zoo Block does much better than, than um, Brooke because he moves the feet and he's able to box out and allow um, for, you know, like this on offense, allow the guys to penetrate to get in for easy layups. And also on defense, he takes up space to prevent them from getting them easy layups. And he contests every shot. Most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time. So he's he, you know, he takes a chance with it. So that's a pretty good thing with him. Um, now Julius Randle, man, he's just been a beast man throughout. Man, he had 11 points in the first quarter. And see, here's the thing: Julius Randle's getting better every game. And the reason why I say that is because if you think about it, once they finally try to stop Julius Randle, Julius Randle started kicking it out. You know what I mean? Because he knew. See, one thing that's why I said before that Julius Randle is the key for the success of the Lakers because once you establish a down low. You know, once you establish the offense down low, the defense got to get honest, and now they got to, you know, they got to come and help out because 
Most of them guys can't play Julius Randle one on one, so they gotta help out. It's the same thing I was saying about the Lakers when we didn't have an interior defender. You know what I'm saying? Or you know when we had an interior defender, which we still don't. The Lakers always going down to the interior helping out, and what happened is the perimeter's wide open. The Lakers are using the exact same book. Julius Randle get the ball, he penetrates, or they kick it to Julius Randle. He set up shop down low. Same thing like Charles Ball used to do. Once the defense collapsed on him. You got the whole perimeter wide open for three-point shooters. And that's all he was doing. Plus, the only difference about Juice Randall is he got Draymond Green-type skills. I mean, he could bring the ball down. And I think his handles are much better than Draymond Green. I'm sorry to say it, but I'm just being honest. He could bring the ball down where now he can set up. Like, to the paint. they already collapsed. If you look at um, Laker Film Room, look at his videos. The defense collapsed. And when they collapse, it leaves the perimeter wide open for Juice Randall to make passes. You know what I mean? So that's, that, that's a beautiful thing. That's why I say Juice Randall is the key for the success of the Lakers. A lot of people might not want to hear it. I'm just being honest because Brandon Ingram and all them guys could just fe feast off of Julius Randle. But he's the key. Brandon had another good game. He's getting more and more comfortable. He had, I think he had 19 points, or I think 19 or 21, something like that. He, you see he's playing better. Um, Lonzo Ball, man, I mean, on the little bit of minutes he's playing, man, this guy's killing. You know, I mean, you can say what you want about him. He's killing. I mean, if you look at his stats, he's in mostly every stats across the board. From steals to rebounding to blocks to freaking assists, he's all over the freaking court. He's doing the thing, man. And when, and when Lonzo went ahead, the ball moves. The only thing I will say, and this is not a shot at IT. I know IT is almost like um, like Jordan Clark that he needs the ball. I prefer to have Lonzo and the, the ball in Lonzo and more than IT. That's the only thing I prefer because Lonzo is – the feature of that offense. I don't, you know, I don't have no problem with IT having the ball, but I noticed as watching, I noticed that a lot of times Lonzo ball will get Lonzo will get the ball up to IT and let IT bring it down. And then Lonzo, what he does is because he see one thing good, I'm gonna tell you how good Lonzo ball is, man. I, I got to say this. Whoa, I got to say this. Rick Flair style right now. Lonzo ball is so freaking good. He don't even need the ball. IT can bring the ball down. He'll pass to Lonzo and Lonzo because he he, he thinks so quick when it comes to passing. Soon as Lonzo get that ball, that ball is out of hand in three seconds. He already passes somebody for an easy shot. Lonzo Ball does not really hold the ball a lot. He's already thinking way ahead of you. So when the defense starts to move, try to move on him, he's already making that pass. He don't even hold the ball as long. If you watch it, when, when somebody bring the ball down, they pass to Lonzo. Lonzo will make a quick pass out to somebody for an easy shot or easy layup. He don't hold the ball long. And that's like 90% of his offense right there. So Lonzo, that's how good Lonzo is. Lonzo is so good, he don't even need a ball. That's, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to be like a dick riding up like that. I'm just calling it how I see it. You know what I mean? I'm just being on oh, this guy dang he keep coming on, man. I think it's a ghost in this dang old car. I'm not even hitting the button to keep popping up. But anyway, that's how good Lonzo is. Um, the whole team, like I said, the whole team was playing freaking good. Um, now, Brad Hill got, um, he had a, a groan injury or something. Uh, you know, he got hit in the groans. But I think he might be all right. He said he'd probably be able to play some dessert. I'm not too sure. But I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that based on the fact that I'll, I'll our, you know, our rotation is much smaller. I'm hoping and I'm praying, man. I'm praying, you know, that um, that Kuzma get to play that small forward spot. I just want to see him there. I know a lot of fans say that, you know, and I'm going to keep saying it over again. I know a lot of fans say that, you know, he'd be slow on his feet. He's not good defensively. Kuzma is pretty good defensively, guys. A lot of y'all be sleeping on that. And y'all cannot tell me at the end of the day, there's not one guy in the NBA who does not get broken down once in a while. NBA right now, the way this 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 NBA is set up is a, a high scoring caliber type of NBA. You know, with this one, back in the days, you know defense. You know, you see guys get physical and this like that. Kuzma at his size played pretty good defensively. You know what I mean? And another thing is that he always like he does what Lonzo Ball does. If a guy beat him off the off the off the uh, dribble, he will always come back and, and make a behind a, you know behind a back uh, block or anything, something like that. The same thing with Lonzo Ball. Now. And going back to what I said about Zublock with IT, the reason why I like Zublock on the floor with IT is because IT, we know he's a defensive liability. Okay, we understand that. But offensive-wise, he can do the dangle thing. We, we we know that as well. You need somebody. And see, one thing about it, and that's why the Lakers were so good, because we had Shaq, Bynum, and all of them. So when guys got broken down, you had an interior defender waiting in the waiting in the you know waiting in the um in the paint, so you can alter these guys' shot when they break you know break down and get easy penetration stuff like that. Cause uh, the dragon he was doing whatever he want, you know he got to the the back to the he got to the rim plenty of times. But if you notice when Zublock was in there, that's on Brook because Brook he doesn't always patrol the paint. Brook mostly is like out there on the perimeter. You know what I'm saying? He comes out and Brook always go go for those those quick uh those quick fakes a lot. And that's why they were getting a lot of dunks because he's thinking that it's the, the strong side help will come over and help him out. But that was IT. 
IT can't, you know, I mean, let's be real. These guys, 6'9", 6'10", dunking. IT can't do nothing but really foul them. So, Brook was going for a lot of fakes. But at the end of the day, if you watch Zublock, Zublock was moving and he was putting body on them. You know, and, and basically taking them away, taking away a lot of those those alley oops. They was getting alley oops still, but not as many as they were doing on Brook. They was only getting a few on Zublock. But what I can say with IT, like if this man break them down, they go to the basket. Zublock is there to alter their shot. But don't get me wrong, Brook Lopez does it too, but not as consistently as Zublock does it. Zublock get in there, he can run the floor. I know y'all see him running the floor. There was a part where Lonzo Ball got the ball, and I thought Lonzo was gonna make the plans for Zublock. Zublock was gone. He freaking left everybody. Like you know, he waving, but Lonzo gave it up to. I forgot who he gave it up to, but um, no, he brought it across the um, he brought it across the paint. They slowed the ball down, slowed the game down a little bit. But other than that, man, everybody played good. Um, I don't know if Josh Hart might be out for the season. We're not sure. You know, he got um, he just got um surgery done on his finger, so let's hope and pray that he can get back into the rotation. KCP is playing better, man. They all are playing good. They're playing within the system. You, you ain't got to worry about looking over your shoulder. Who's going to get the playing time? You know, if you're going to be able to come off the bench, if if Lou Walton just stayed with this small rotation, I said it before, no more than four men should be coming off that bench in rotation. Not no freaking whole five unit because when you do that, you take away the opportunity from your star players or players that are hot. They're going to have to sit down in favor of somebody else. Now that your rotation is small, it's easy for players to feel comfortable. They're having fun again. You know, they're enjoying the game. I love it. We won four in a row, man. I don't care what nobody say. I said it before. If Magic Johnson never did that, um, went um, public with it about, you know, trading players and all that, that nine-game losing streak that we had, that would never been in tuition. We actually probably won games. Um, the KCP situation when he was going through his personal life, he should have been sitting down on the bench instead of playing. There's a lot of situations that happened that prevented the Lakers from winning more games. I'm telling you, at the end of the day, the Lakers could have won a lot of games. Right now, we have a chance to get to 500. I really think we can get to 500. I really believe that we might have a chance to make the uh, A spot. I'm going to speak in intuition because one thing I learned today, you cannot have doubt. You got to believe. And if you're a Laker fan, you want to believe that they're going to make the playoff. If the Lakers make the playoff, it goes back to what Kobe said. We shouldn't have to beg nobody to come here. They should want to come. Simple as that. That's why you got to win games to prove to these players that we uh, that you want to be here. And I'm going to do my weekly uh, my, my weekly. Um, report because I want to talk about LeBron James. I know some of you LeBron James will get fan of uh, um get upset, but I I've, I've been watching LeBron since I've been um watching the Cleveland games and stuff like that. Cause like I said, I've been mostly focused on the Lakers game. I used to be a real big um fanatic of the NBA period. I used to watch all games. But lately I only been watching the Lakers game up until Le um Larry Nance and Jordan Clarkson got traded to Cleveland and I had to go back and watch some video. I'm gonna talk about something about LeBron. Like I said it's gonna make a lot of LeBron fans up uh, upset. A lot of um, Laker fans who want LeBron to come here is going to piss you off. But I have to speak about it because I want y'all to understand and realize this. Anyway, y'all have a blessed one. Take care. It's your man Herb. I'm out. See y'all Saturday on Twitter. If not, I love you guys. Please be safe out there. Take care.